Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We're so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He is so amazing. He is so faithful. He is so wonderful. He is so kind. He is so love. The God we serve is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. We serve a God. That he is so faithful, so faithful, that he will not disappoint you. He will not fail you. He will not give up on you. Our job is to continue to keep our eyes focused on him. Stay in his words. Stay in his promises. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands. And don't you dare let it go. He will get you through what you are going through. Whatever it is that you're facing, Jesus will get you through it. I promise you that, my brothers and sisters. I know you might say, well, it's all said and done. That's why I'm always encouraging every last one of y'all to always praise him. Praise is an everyday thing. So when you praise from your heart, I ain't talking about from your mouth. When you praise from your heart, everything that you are going through, dealing with, will wash away because at that point, my brothers and sisters, you put all your faith, your trust, your hope, and all your energy into Jesus. That is exactly what you're doing. And when you're doing it, yeah, the situation is going to be there, but it will not be as strong. You won't focus on it as much. You won't dwell on it as much. Because the only thing that you want to do is think and praise Jesus. The only thing that you want to do is draw closer to Jesus. The only thing that you want to do is draw closer to his words. Draw closer to his promises. That's why I say praise is an everyday thing. That's why I say it'll be all the better. Just praise. Every day. Be thankful. Every day. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for what he is doing. Thank you. Thank him because things didn't work out. You got to thank him. Anybody can praise when it's going good. That's the easy part. But can you thank him? Can you praise him? Can you worship him when things are not going good? When you don't see things happening? When you don't see things working out? When you're going through depression? When you're going through pain? When you're going through hurt? When you're going through suffering? Can you thank and praise him then? And if you can thank Jesus then and praise him then and worship him then and stay connected to him then, he has his eyes on you and he also can trust you as well. Because Jesus really trusts you, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God is coming for you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Just give me all the things, give me all the praise, and give me all the glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Father God, for this day, this opportunity, Father God. So thankful, Father God, that we're able to seek you even more, to praise you even more, to glorify you even more, to magnify and exalt your holy name even more. Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us fully satisfied. Heavenly Father God, there's no place that I'd rather be at right now today. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, just lift me up with thanksgiving and praise. Father God, this is your time. This is your hour. You do what you do best, Father God. You move through this place. You move through this atmosphere. Father God, allow your presence to move through us right now. Lift us up right now, Father God. Protect us through your hands right now today, Father God. Cover us. Comfort us right now, Father God, through the storm, through our situation, our circumstance that we're going through, what we're facing right now. 
Because God, we know it's not too hard for you. God, we know it's not too difficult for you. Oh God, we know it's nothing that you can't do. So God, we are resting in your words right now today. We are resting in your promises right now. We are resting in your hands. A lot of angels to join with us and praise and worship right now today. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. That house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Oh God, we just come to you today with thanksgiving and praise as we enter into the courts today, your courts, your house. Father God, with thanksgiving and praise and worship Jesus. Heavenly Father God, you are welcome and invited to enter into your homes right now. Right here on your YouTube channel right now. Right here on your platform right now. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here. In, your, in my sister's house, my sister's homes right now, my brother's homes, and to my brother's life right now. Father God, allow the spirit to move through this place right now. Oh God, allow this, allow this word to be for somebody today. Oh God, I know that you're about to speak to somebody today. I know that you're about to heal somebody today. I know that you're about to deliver someone today. Oh God, I know that you're about to move through this place today. Oh God, I know that you're about to show up and show out through this place today. God, every view, every like, every comment, every new every new person that's going to subscribe to your channel, it goes and belongs to you. God, I'm so thankful right now to pray and pray and fellowship with all my brothers and sisters today. Father God, we are available for praise today. We are available for service today. We are available for the kingdom today. But most of all, Jesus, we are available for you. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene in this place right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill us up with more of the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you for help right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you for guidance and direction right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and clarity right now. Holy Spirit, I'm going to say that you're welcome. You're invited to enter to the house of the Lord right now. And my brother's homes and my brother's life right now. And to my sister's homes and to my sister's life right now. Allow the catch the Holy Ghost fight through the service and through the sermon right now. Father God, you continue to fill us up more the Holy Spirit right now. Mm -hmm. And God, we just live filled with thanksgiving and praise. We love you. We trust you. And we put our faith, our trust, and our hope in your hands again today. We might not understand what's going on. We might not understand your ways. But Jesus, we are trusting you. And we know that you got us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just 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 can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith, my trust, and my hope into your hands every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pray and I glorify your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more of you and less of myself, because I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I can't thank you enough. And if you ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now. Let him know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen. This word is for somebody today. This message is for somebody today. And something had to happen to a brother of mine. Something had to happen to a sister of mine. God had to gouge our eyes out because we were falling for the wrong person. We lost focus. We lost ourselves. Because why? We was lusting after the wrong person, thinking and pretending it was love. Both of them start with the alphabet L, but one is different than the other. The word lust me, we have strong sexual desire for someone. But that person who we had strong sexual desires for, they had the same thing for us. 
And they took, I ain't gonna say they, they took, we allowed them to take our strength because they was draining us from left to right and right to left. We didn't know we was coming to God. We didn't even know ourselves. We thought that they really loved us. They thought, we thought they really admired us. We thought that they really had feelings for us, but they really did. They knew that we was listening after them. And he took us for a ride, a long ride on a long, painful journey. We was like a sick puppy falling behind them, not knowing, not knowing we was going down the wrong direction. We were going down the wrong road. We did everything what they wanted us to do and expected us to do. We had fish scales on our eyes because we couldn't see. Only thing we was looking at was the, the strong sexual desire of that person. We forgot about love. Love comes from God. It was no God in them, but it was God in you. We loved them, but they didn't love us at all. We thought that they did. That's what we thought. That's what we was thinking. We talked about them. We bragged about them. We boasted about them. We even put their pictures up all on social media. But that one time that they brag about us, that one time that they boast about us. Not one time that they put our picture up on social media. They hid us from the world. But we showcased, we showcased them to the world. Oh, heaven, Jesus. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody went through it. Or somebody's going through it right now. But I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters. Your eyes got to be gouged out so you can see who the person who you really think loves you really don't love you. My eyes got gouged out. And now I can see, baby. I can tell you that now there's no fish scales on my eyes. And once my eyes got gouged out, no longer do I have the eyes for that person anymore. No longer do I have the feelings for that person anymore. No longer do I admire that person in the morning. But now I can see. Now I can see the light. I lost my strength when I was with that person. Even though I don't have eyes for that person no more, but my strength came back twice and stronger than it was before. I'm more stronger now than I ever was when I was with that person. Somebody don't have eyes for that person anymore. Someone don't have feelings for that person anymore. Someone don't have strong sexual desires for that person anymore. And right now, this person trying to do every and anything to try to lure you back in. But you looking at it now like, man, this is what I was going crazy of. This is what I was in love with. This is what I was doing cartwheels for. See, as you look at it, you say, whoa. What is this? What was I thinking about? So we was blinded by the lust. Thinking it was love. And see the way it happened with this character in this Bible that we about to read. We all had a Samson in us. And we all was a part of Delilah. Samson loved Delilah. But Delilah did not love Samson. See, Samson had a lust spirit. For the light, for the light, they have no type of spirit for Samson. Everything that Samson went through with Delilah is the same thing we went through with the Delilah. And that Delilah knew what she was doing. See, a lot of us right now today, I don't know who God is about to talk to right now. We was in love and lusting over Delilah. But that, but that Delilah was not in love with us and she was not even lusting. Off of us. She was just taking our strength. She was just redirecting our step. She was just dragging us into a poor pit 
of pain, of suffering, of hurt and misery. That's the only thing she was doing. But we couldn't say it at the time. Even though God was giving us signs and warnings. But we overlooked and said, God, you're tripping. This woman loves us. This man got to love us. This friend got to be a real true friend. And God said, really? You really think so? You don't see? You don't feel? But see, when you when you so wrapped up in that lust, you don't feel nothing. You numb to it. You don't see nothing because your eyes is too focused on that. You don't see anything else but that. Your eyes is glued to it like it's glued to a TV channel or program that you like to watch. That what your eyes was glued to. We lost ourselves in the midst of all of that. Ain't no need to be ashamed of it because I was lost in it. But now not no more because my eyes don't have eyes for her. I don't have feelings for her. I don't admire her anymore. Yes, I had to go through it. Yes, you had to go through it, my brothers. Yes, you had to go through it, my sisters. You don't have feelings for him no more. It don't matter if he hit the lottery right now and say he gave you all the earnings. The first thing you say, I don't want that. Because you don't have eyes for him no more. You don't have feelings for him no more. You don't admire him no more. Because you know what he is. You know what he's about. God had to fix your eyes and say, that's not the person for you. God had to gouge your eyes out and say, this person is going to mean you no good. Sometimes we got to allow God to gouge our eyes out so we can see what he want for us or he want for us. But see, sometimes we so caught up in these delights thinking this is the person for us when actually this is the person that was wrong for us. Amen? Amen. So let's turn our Bible to Judges. And we're going to read verses, I mean, chapter 16. And we're going to read verses 15 through 21. That's Judges chapter 16. And we're going to read verses 15 through 21. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. How many times we went through that? That the lies always say, oh, you say that you love me. Tell me this. Tell me that. What's going on? And we get so weak in the delight because it's the lust spirit that we have for them. And we give in. And we give in. And we give in. They take, but they never give. They continue to take and take. The more that we get, they take. They receive the benefits, but they don't want to give nothing to us. The light never gave nothing to Samson. But Samson was the one that was given to the light. She didn't want him, but he wanted her. That person that you was with, my brothers and sisters, didn't want you, but you wanted them. And now the table has turned. Now you don't have eyes for them anymore. Now you don't have feelings for them anymore. Now you don't have the desires for them anymore. You're not even focused on them anymore. You don't even care anything about them anymore. Because God has fixed your eyes. Amen? Amen. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite set apart to God since birth. If my hair was shaved, my strength would leave me and I become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more. He said, he told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hand, having put him to sleep on her lap. She called a man to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistines are upon you. 
He woke up from his sleep. And though I got out of bed before and, and shake, shake myself free. But he did not know that, that the Lord has left him. The Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after he had been shaved. Do you see that sense of strength came back? But God had to gouge his eyes out to let him know the person that you in love with you should really listen on. Sometimes God got to do that to let you know you was lusting on that person. It was no love there. And now that your eyes is gouged out, no longer that you see that person for who they really is. Because you don't have eyes for him no more. You don't have eyes for her no more. And the strength that you lost is so amazing how God has given your strength back right now. And the reason why you don't have eyes for that person anymore because God has blessed you and gave you your strength when your strength was misused, when your strength was misabused, when your strength was mishandled. Now you got the strength of an ox. You have the strength of a bull. You have the strength of a whole offensive line football team. And your strength is so strong right now, it doesn't matter what he or she trying to do. Your eyes are not fixed or gazed at them anymore because God had to redirect and order your steps because when you was lusting after them you was lost when you was lusting after them you was missing on a bag of milk carton when you was lusting after them you didn't know yourself when you was lusting after them you didn't know that you was coming to God when you was lusting after them you didn't know who you were you didn't know who your real identity was so your eyes had to be gouged out. So you can focus on the Lord. So you can focus on his words. So you can focus on his promises. Since my eyes had to be gouged out. Because the Delilah, who we thought we was in love with, was really that we was less than over. And they really didn't have no true feelings for us. They didn't have no love for us. They just took it down the wrong road. God said, enough is enough. That's when God had to step in. He had to remove your eyesight. And you got to thank Jesus for removing your eyesight. I thank him every day for it. Because now my eyes are not focused on that person anymore. My eyes aren't even dwelling on that person anymore. I don't have eyesight for that person anymore because I don't have feelings for that person anymore. I don't have the love no more for that person no more. I don't even admire that person anymore. The fish scales had to be removed from my eyes. And once the fish scale was removed from my eyes, I said, wow, what was I? I thought I was in some type of trance. But God said, nah. I had to fix your eyes because you was focused on the wrong thing, going down, going down the wrong steps. And I had to put you back where I need you to be put at. And I said, thank you, Jesus. If you know that God had to guide your eyes out because you was lusting on the wrong person, thinking it was love, go and tell Jesus thank you. Go and give him a big thank you right now today. And if this word is for you, you know God is talking to you, Say, thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you, Jesus, for this powerful message today. Go and hit Jesus' like button right now. Go and hit the subscribe button right now. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying a simple little prayer that God has already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with this.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put him first place. Always continue to trust him no matter what. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. You continue to hold him to his unchangeable hands and don't you dare let it go. You continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep God in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer. 
and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving me in a cell too. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name.